now broadcasting live live from e-tourism summit 2020 this has been an amazing run of 21 days 28 presentations we tried a lot of new stuff uh we had i think like 78 different pr presentations or presenters that contributed to uh to the week josh this has been uh you know, I guess if you if you'd say we're going to make some lemons out of lemonade, lemonade out of lemons, uh, this was clearly the year. And I want to thank you for you uh, hosted and sponsored our first first one with Sarah Quinlan and our last one today. So thanks to you uh, and the entire Street Sense team. Absolutely. I mean, I, I just think it's been great to see. And even as more and more are tuning in, this is fantastic uh, to watch you guys tune in and, and see so many familiar faces, Wes and Jackie and Linda, and Georgie, Sarah, et cetera. I'm sure more will be, be tuning in here. Um, it, what a great idea just to shift and pivot a little bit, right? And, and, and given the virtual climate and everything that we've uh, now grown accustomed to, a great idea, a great strategy, I think. Um, I'd love to just, you know, uh, candidly, Will, I mean, how do you, how do you feel like it's, how do you feel like it's gone? You know, it's been, uh, again, looking at 20, 2020, um, at the beginning of the year, this certainly isn't what we thought about. Uh, but as we've talked about it, all these sessions over the course of eTourism Summit, um, you know, really uh, accelerated a lot of new things. And I think eTourism Summit that we, we uh, attend next year, um, will be a very, very different. Uh, we've learned a lot. You know, we expanded the footprint of eTourism Summit. We had partners around, you know, around the country that, you know, opted for the community pass and shared this content with, you know, the marketers in their community. Things like that, I think, will be with us forever. You know, this is too good, a, too many smart, talented, insightful leaders presented over the course of 21 days. And um, and that information can really help all tourism marketers moving yep. forward. So I think that that hybrid component will be will be here forever. Um, I know I can't wait to see everybody in person. Um, yeah. And you know, the eTourism Summit in November 9th and tenth will be uh, will be different. It'll be certainly much smaller this year. But um, we're going to videotape it. We're going to share every presentation uh, that is done live with uh, with the community here as well. So. Um, It'll be good. It'll be a good opportunity to continue to keep our industry moving. I love it. I love it. And uh, I agree with you because it's like you, you record this and now um, you have all this content, right? For posterity's sake, certainly for continuing ongoing education to be able to look back. So I think it's um, it'll be interesting to see as we shift into 21 and we start, you know, rolling through. And of course, None of us knew what 20 would, would hold for us. So who knows what, what 21 is going to really unfold to be, but it's going to be great. And we'll be able to, to look back and certainly continue to engage with one another. Um, so, yeah, this is, I, I'm, I'm excited to hear you say all that. And, and certainly it's been fun to, to participate. And yeah. uh, it, it's really good. You know, and it just just from the very beginning, and I, and I look back to Sarah Quinlan when we, we talk, and one of the smartest – people that uh, that I've had the opportunity to know and, and really talking about, you know, the macroeconomic issues that the country's facing. And I think, you know, when you, when you think back to the first uh, staying connected webinars we did in April, and then we yep. started this in October, and it's fascinating um, how much, and Sarah really brought this to a head when she said, you know, consumers have changed, you know, yes. fundamentally consumers have changed. And I think being able to start out the conversation with that message that, um, you know, we can't go back and do what we've always done because our customers have changed. I've changed. I bet I'm sure you've changed. I mean, values and priorities and, yep. you know, my opinion of travel and my opinion of, a, you know, a lot of things is very, very different than it was at the beginning of, uh, of the year. So starting off with that mindset, I think really, really helped um, kind of guide the conversation. And and then I thought the second presentation when we had, you know, Longwoods and uh, Adam Sachs from Oxford Economics and uh, Brian London to really focusing on the on the research component, destination analysts um, for businesses, by the way, that have done extraordinary things for the industry um, in terms of providing guidance and insight over the course of the, the entire pandemic. But one thing struck me then, Josh, was um, Adam Sachs and kind of setting the mm -hmm. Straight. So one, consumers have changed fundamentally, and two, uh, you know, Adam's prediction on the recovery I think was really, really important. We talked a lot about you know getting back to normal, but when when he laid out kind of the pathway that you know 2021 is going to be rough for six months, 
start to get better in Q3 and end up probably 60% of where we were in 2019, 2022, coming back to maybe 80% of what was, you know, normal and record year. And then 2023 back to maybe 90% and until 2024 to get back to the volume and the spend that we started the year expecting. So I think the two, the combination of the two of those, those first two days of each tourism summit really set a great stage for all mm. the conversations that, um, that really uh, happened over the, you know, the ensuing 19 days and the rest of the month. I love that too. The, the, um, <clears throat> in the beginning, you know, obviously we're, we're going to be kind of bringing up, uh, and I think we've got a few special guests we're going to be inviting uh, shortly, but, you know, just as we think back over the last 21 uh, days and just going um, all of these, all these takeaways, all these great sessions. And, and one of them that really jumps out to me too, though, was going about, think about uh, really rethinking and re-understand uh, how to engage consumers, um, where we should be engaging them. So it's almost like, um, you know, we've, we've used this messaging for a long time, you know, around marketing, right message, right person, right time, you know, and thinking about that and stuff like that. But yet uh, research has told us that we've seen and we've talked about this month that most DMO marketers are really unsure that they're doing that, right? That they're tar that they're targeting the right people, um, that their messages are resonating uh, and, and that their confidence, their confidence is, is still pretty low that what they're doing is working, right? So that's a really interesting thing, I think, as we as we do review where we've been and we look forward. Um, to me, that's one thing that really jumps out and goes, "Okay, that's that's something we need to pay attention to and really and really like you know prioritize in our mix, uh, you know, kicking into next year." Yeah, the 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 messaging, I think, uh, the conversations we had, and again, I we're so lucky to have so, so many really smart, insightful, uh, creative people that have. Uh, come on board and presented at all of these sessions uh, from from day one. And um, you know when you start to understand that consumers have changed and messaging is going to have to evolve, um, I think the biggest takeaway that I got uh, really was that um, destination marketing kind of fundamentally is changed, and it's probably going to yeah. change forever in that um, we have to evolve and, and react and adapt really, really quickly. And, you know, I think that couldn't have been more clear and any number of the conversations, you know, the one that struck me the most is, you know, what are you thinking about for the holiday season? And they said, you know, we're not worried about that. We're, we're worrying about October, you know, and that was yeah. October 20th, I believe. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, we're reacting and making decisions much quicker. Um, and I think that's going to be here to stay, which I, again, I think is a really, really good thing for the industry. Mm -hmm. And I love, I mean, Becca mentions this in a chat and I, I agree completely. We've seen this, uh, I think in small pockets, we've talked about this over the last, you know, several years at ETS will, but uh, the importance of resident sentiment has just never been more uh, crucial, right? Certainly uh, you brought up Longwoods and, and they have really championed well. Uh, I love I love having seen them take a more national spotlight, uh, you know, throughout this throughout this year. That has been really fantastic. I'm I'm really excited for them through that. Uh, but the even looking forward, going <clears throat> that's something we can't forget, right? That's something we can't move beyond. We're not going to move beyond keeping a good pulse of uh, resident local sentiment so that's 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 going to be really really key and i'm glad that that has i'm glad to have heard that come up over and over and over again over and over again and and in multiple levels which i think is really really interesting for a dmo opportunity yes we want to track resident senate to see what we want tourism to look like when we come back right understanding what is the right fit of tourism within the industry so that was one um we saw dmos across the across the country this year um really reach out into and 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 more aggressively uh involve and engage and support small businesses it started with restaurants but then it quickly moved to retail so we've seen um one the community response and resonance sentiment two the real support of the industry at the ground level which i think is fascinating and this building community becoming a priority third and then then it kind of evolved into okay now let's make our you know let's make sure that we have the the rules and the procedures in place to get our get our residents comfortable going out and supporting restaurants, going out to attractions, being outdoors. And that led to the kind of community safety messaging that I think is gonna be here forever. 
And then ultimately kind of going back to that, uh, you know, I think it was, came up a couple conversations is, you know, first we got to get our, our residents comfortable coming out and about, and then they're going to travel a little bit further. And then they're going to, you know, they're going to get more engaged and it's going to take one trip before that, you know, a little trip, a little trip out, a little venture out, and then a little bit further and a little bit further and a little bit further. And that's what we're going to need to do to, um, to get this industry, you know, kind of rolling again. It, well, and isn't that just perfectly aligned with our own personal experiences of conquering fear, <laughs> right? I mean, I think, you know, what we've all survived and, and through this trauma and are still still really surviving, um, PTSD, so to speak, if you will, Zoom fatigues, I mean, on and on and on, you know, digital, it, massive digital transformation uh, across what you would normally spend years doing has happened within a matter of weeks, right? For, for cu cultures and companies and various, various things like that. And so, uh, naturally it's just going to take time. And, and I like that you're talking about, it's like, it is, it's, it's one micro step at a time. Uh, um, the, you know, the whole rethinking re return on objective, right. There's another one I remember, uh, which is really good in going, okay, what is right. If we understand that consumer behavior and that it's shifting, uh, what what would be our primary objective at this point? And 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 just really introducing that, going okay. If we just can get this right here, this small little piece of it, um, then great, right? And we can chalk that up as success, right? If we can just tap into this new partnership, I love Wes uh, here certainly talking about you know resident sentiments uh, survey in partnership with the university. Uh, we talked about that even yesterday, growing the networks, right? Widening our uh, perspective of networks and uh, widening our understanding of the DMO. How, you know, even Bill was saying, I loved it yesterday talking about that we've probably thought too narrowly about our organizations. We thought too narrowly about our roles even. So in the community and inside the destination. So seeing those expand and grow, that's, that's all of that I think is, is on point and exciting as we look forward. Absolutely. The whole the starting at resident sentiment on all the focus that so much more focus on community that's here to stay. And I think it's, you know, that's a new skill set. We talked again a little bit about that yesterday. You know, it's a new role for DMOs in a lot of ways um, that I think is going to benefit, all, you know, everybody benefit the DMO, benefit the community and actually have them ultimately provide a more engaging experience for for visitors when they when they come back. Yep, that's right. That's right. I think another one of my big takeaways, um, you know, looking into next year, I, I love just the understanding that um, we, the idea around purpose has been a huge one, right? And, and I've been looking at this from a real personal stake because um, I love kind of taking a more anthropological view of history and audiences and consumers. And yes, I mean, you already said it, consumer behaviors change, interest has, has changed, but uh, Gen Z is is quickly. I mean, we're seeing it even now uh, with voter turnout, right? And being driven uh, really, really well, exceptional voter turnout across the country, and Gen Z being a real dominant force in that. And of course, we see that in how brands are responding because of the buying power that that audience has, right? So one of the things that that Gen Z tells us so much is, okay, what do you stand for, right? What does your destination stand for? What is your purpose? That was uh, really interesting. One of my favorite sessions was when Steve Paganelli and TripAdvisor hosted uh, Facebook, Google, and Pandora. And, you know, a couple of the things that came out of that session, one was, you know, 60% of people are now making decisions based on what, um, you know, what the brand stands for. And, and, that's, yep. and that's new and it's accelerated uh, pretty rapidly in this, in this state. You know, 80% of consumers are trying new new products over the course of the pandemic. So the whole concept of brand loyalty has changed. So, you know, how do we, you know, you can't just rely on past repeat visitors. You know, they want to know, one, are you taking care of, are you going to take care of me? Are you going to keep me safe? Are you, do you stand for something bigger and bolder than just trying to get my money? And, um, and that's really, really important. I thought, you know, another takeaway from that conversation was the most helpful e ecosystems are going to be this companies that win. So it's not necessarily about marketing. It's about taking care of those, those potential and current and, you know, future visitors. Yeah. Uh, trust was another one, you know, I think <clears throat> just seeing how do you, uh, and this is, would be like really, really profitable for every, not just those that are on today and maybe those that might be watching this recording later, but uh, schedule intentional meetings with your teams and with your partners and ask the question, how can we measure trust, right? Yeah. How can we report, how can we report on that? Are we building trust? 
are there trust gaps within our networks internally, locally, right? Between agencies, organizations, nonprofits, right? Between the public and nonprofit sector, are we building trust? Uh, if we've got challenges around funnels, or I mean funding and, wh and whatnot, are we, uh, are we building corporate trust, right? To where maybe we can potentially band together and, and create some more vibrant campaigns for, for our destination recovery and stuff like that. that. That's been another one I think is just really crucial. It's, of course, again, we, we kind of go, isn't it, isn't it normal? Isn't it natural? Don't we as, as consumers all kind of know that? We kind of innately know that, but yet uh, organizationally, we're not necessarily designed to do that well. And, and the, the pandemic has really introduced that and, and allowed space, if you will, uh, to pay attention to that. So that's really good. So, you know, uh, Josh, talk, riffing on the idea of loyalty, um, last year at eTourism Summit, we uh, we gave out an award for uh, uh, somebody that had perfect attendance and attended every single eTourism Summit. I mean, that's, that's loyalty, that's really cool. And she also attended, uh, probably more than anybody, uh, these uh, virtual sessions. So I would like to welcome a special guest and ask Jan yes. to pop on in and, and talk to us about what she liked best about e I love it. I love it. Come on up, Jan. I know you're here. All right. There, where is she? Where's Jan? Where she is. I know she's there somewhere. Uh-oh. Well, Technical. Technical challenges. Uh oh, uh oh. Well, Jan, when you can, pop on in, and we'll and we'll we'll keep riffing. Yeah, on, absolutely. On that loyalty idea, um, <laughs> which is which I, I think I, is so exciting. I I love that. Uh, the other thing you know that really stands out to me too from all of these sessions is is, is you mentioned loyalty, so that's that's what's triggering in my head. But I don't know if you caught the news uh, this morning. You know. Quarterly earnings just come out if you pay attention or following those. So here she is. Here she comes Jan. Amazon reporting a hundred billion dollars in revenue uh, from the last quarter, which insane. is just insane. But it speaks to what you're talking about. Like we're trying new channels, we're shopping new channels, we're doing new things. Um, that just blows my mind. There she is, Jan. Hey, Jan how Hello. are you? Great. Sorry about that. Hello. Well, thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. I wouldn't miss it. Well, no, you've proven it over, <laughs> it over 21 years. I know. Isn't that crazy? But um, they've all been great years and, and have really helped with how we've been growing our, our industry and our destination. So I'm always happy to be part of this. It's the highlight of my fall for sure. Awesome. Well, tell us what... Uh, Tell us what you liked, what you learned, what was the your key takeaway from 21 days? You know, um, there were a lot. I mean, first of all, thank you for, you know, still executing the entire e-tourism in such a great way. I thought it was very inspiring every day to have an hour where you could just kind of focus on, on what we are doing. Um, but to piggyback on what you said earlier, Will, just about the opportunity, I think, for our organizations. I mean, I feel like right now we're kind of on this two-way path where we're, we're triaging constantly, but still taking advantage of um, the opportunity that will truly be there for us in the future and how we reimagine our organizations, how we start to look at how we're going to do things differently and um, more efficiently and better, and it will not look the same. And to me, that's very exciting. I think that's um, really exciting of just um, getting back down to some nitty gritty, but taking opportunities to look to utilize all the new tools we have and the research and the data and so forth, it can go on and on. But um, that has felt very encouraging. It, it is, and you know, it's exciting that it can happen, right? We can, we can, yeah. we can make changes and we can do things differently. I mean, as uh, Becca just put up, you know, throwing away the old, the old school and trying new stuff. A great quote I heard was, you know, um, you know, if you're if you're um, a real risk taker, you're going to make two really bad mistakes every year. And if you're totally risk averse, you're still going to make two bad mistakes every year. So we, we have the freedom to fail and try new things. Yeah, I heard you in the uh, the uh, um, session yesterday, which was fantastic, by the way, as well. And I thought that quote was very it resonated with me because you know it's okay to fail and it's okay to take some risks. And I think now more than ever, we kind of have that opportunity to to do that and um, really looking forward to that even in our in our own organization. So 
as, as yeah. hard as it is and as and we're somewhat being forced into this um we got to make the best of it right well, it's scary to admit mistakes. It's scary to, you know, say what we did, right? Because that's that's part of the dynamics, part of the narrative. We 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 know is longest longest record of growth, uh, uh, period. So it's like we're really good at patting ourselves on the back, champion that. Uh, who was it? Uh, uh, good news, uh, right? Telling good news all, all the time from yesterday, and even so, yeah. to be able to say, oh well, okay, it didn't work out so well. Uh, it's really interesting that we connect better to vulnerability into mistakes because we're all human at the end of the day. So that is, that is, I feel like a positive that's coming out of that. That's helping chip away at the veneer, so to speak of, of trying to be something that maybe necessarily isn't, isn't good for us in, in the long run. So that I, I love hearing that too. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing too, is just remembering that, um, staying positive obviously but celebrating even some of the small small wins that we are experiencing i mean who would have thought that we would cheer for an increase of 33 percent occupancy in our destination but you know if the trend is going up that's that's a good way to be going and um you know just allowing ourselves to remember some of those baby steps along the way <laughs> so I uh, love it. Yeah. We're, triage instead of pivot. I love it. We're going to take that word and run with it for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And I stole that from my coworker yesterday because I'm like, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's so good. It's so good. Um, well, this is great. What else, uh, what else are we, what else is jumping out to us? I mean, um, October is such a good month. ETS has always been such a fun thing. I love you talking about you. It certainly is great to know you've been there all the time. Uh, and, and I, I look forward to this month and, and this conference every year because uh, it is good to see all the familiar faces and everything like that. And we miss, we miss being in person, although the, uh, the in-person event coming up on the 9th and 10th is going to be great. I'll be there. I'm looking forward to that uh, and, and seeing those of you that will be there as well. But what, um, what else kind of jumped out at you, uh, Jan, as you were, as you were watching and participating, anything else that the rest of us uh, can look at? You know, I think, um, for me personally, again, it was seeing um, familiar faces at this time. I think we're all kind of getting into that little bit of a, uh, you know, <laughs> what do you, I can't even think of the word right now, but it's, 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 it's time to power through, right? And seeing familiar faces and, and vendors, and I have to say the, uh, the research partners that um, have been supporting us along the way and sharing that information has been very valuable. Um, I can't say enough about that. So I just wanted to give a shout out to, um, you know, who they are, like, uh, the, the great research that we all depend on that we can share with our constituents has been very, very valuable. So um, loved that part of it. Adam Sachs obviously is the highlight, but um, yeah, I think it was just a time to to feel good and, and see our colleagues and, and to realize that we're in this, there's opportunities and there's light at the end of this tunnel and we're going to, share ideas and brainstorm together and get there, right? Yeah, that's a great. That's great. And you know, it, it reminds me of when you're talking about mistakes, we clearly made some mistakes uh, with the Eternal Summit, you know, this year, it, it, maybe you, you can't not if you, if you try a lot of things. But to the point about partners, I, I really want to take a second and just uh, make sure that we all thank the all the sponsors and all the industry businesses that stepped up to make this possible. Um, it's a hard time for everybody in the business and to actually write a check to support a 21-year-old a, a organization really, really means a lot. So from Street Sense to Expedia to Miles, the whole long list, the whole laundry list, the rival list, everybody, um, new sponsors that we brought on board for the very, very first time, uh, you know, with Prant and I mean, there's so many great sponsors and I want to say thank you to to all of them. But uh, the uh, Pineapple PR. I mean, just new new businesses that stepped up. So I, I just want to make sure that, uh, and I will make sure we do a big thank you uh, to to all of them in person. But um, I want to thank all those all those partners that have stepped up to help us make this happen, and um, it's very much appreciated, and will always be remembered. So thank you all. Mm hmm. Here, here. All right. Dan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for maintaining your perfect attendance at ePerson Summit. Um, and we, oh, and she's got her FD Awards sweater vest in honor of our founder and chairman emeritus, Jake Steinem. So, yeah, yes. this is Jake. Yes. Thank I you, Jake. It. I love it. <laughs> I know. I miss him. I miss him. It's like, let's, uh, 
Do a little little recall. Here we go. All right. Now now it's starting to feel normal. Now now, now we start to feel a little normal. Exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Good guys. to see you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, and I just reminded, I mean, so many new sponsors that have come on board, Josh, this year. Samsung ads, Relic Advertising, um, you know, Crank, P but, um, Pineapple PR. It's just so cool uh, to, 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 to see industry step up. And again, we're going to work awfully hard to, to make sure that we're continuing to drive value. And I think you'll see some really cool announcements coming from eTourism Summit the first of the year. Um, we're going to uh, we're going to continue pushing this content out and the content from November, and then I think you'll start to do more of a uh, subscription service. The, you know, we were talking to uh, many partners over the course of this time of what the what the time frame of tourism marketing is, and I I remember Stacy Millman saying, you know, what is is you know is near term next week and long term is you know two months. Um, yeah. So in that environment, uh, we're going to adapt as well. And I think we'll continue to provide some e-tourism summit content throughout the year, keep our community connected and talking to each other and learning from each other, which has probably been the hallmark and why Jan came to e-tourism summit for 21 years is that this industry, even though we are competitive and it's going to get more competitive, uh, we're all willing to share our thoughts and insights and help each other uh, grow. And we're going to need that more now, next year than ever before. Yeah, I love, I mean, I love you just uh, mentioned Relic there because I think, you know, the Destination Marketing Podcast has been wildly successful. And you talk about, you know, how we continue to help each other and grow. Um, that is that is a fantastic resource, uh, certainly alongside the travel vertical for, you know, for us to stay connected and then obviously continue to grow, share success, share our stories. And um, it's I love seeing that community kind of rally around those kind of resources. So I love love that you mentioned Relic and Adam there. You know, who's who's doing a great job with that podcast. So big shout out. I'm not sure if he's on today or not, but I definitely want to give him a, give him a shout out. Absolutely, absolutely. So do you think? Uh, do you want to go to another takeaway? Or do you want to welcome another guest? Oh, we got. Oh, yes, definitely. Let's let's bring up another guest. This is fun. Let's keep let's keep it moving here. <laughs> Was fun. A special guest, Frank. Are you are you ready? <laughs> Frank, come on, house. <laughs> All right. Um, so, talking about um, one of my big takeaways uh, again, and we've talked a little bit about it, but I think uh, utilization of data is is massive, and recognizing the data that we have, how to use it better. Uh, I don't think destination marketing has really been that data. Destination marketing decision making has been that um, you know data driven, but I think that's gonna be a big takeaway. Welcome, Frank. Thank you for being here, and thank you for supporting eTourism Summit. This has been awesome. It, it's been a great it's been a great series of events, and you know as this thing drags on into whatever month it is, you know, twenty one days of knowledge, like drinking out of a fire hose. But I I commend you, Will, Josh, just having the event and bringing us all together. It you said it, connecting, community, data, all of those things come to bear here where we're all in this together, we're all trying to figure it out and we're advising clients in California that's still not open and in Florida that's been open all yeah. summer to a limited drive yeah. market and in the Bahamas, right. you have to get on a plane and fly there and people are reluctant and there's quarantine in place. So it, it's this diverse set, we see it within our clients and then we come to, you know, to e-tourism to share that, learn more, hear knowledge. And it's it's that common connection of we can get through this together. And you know, something with this much history, over 20 years, it's like, what are we gonna do this year? Everything's different. We're gonna have it. The format will be different, the the engagement will be different. But at the end of the day, we're gonna do what we always do: bring people together, talk about best practices in the industry, um, what people are dealing with now bigger term factors. And that's what I'll talk about. Kind of one of my favorite parts, I think that I gained from it, just things that would be issues, whether or not COVID or travel mm. suppression was here, um, those same things kind of rise up. So I appreciate you guys having it. I appreciate the opportunity to participate and just really the knowledge that I've learned. We don't have all the answers, but we have a better understanding of what is working in some areas, what we can apply in our own and just continue to grow out through recovery. Will, I hope it is not all the way to 2023. There are some optimism for some sectors and destinations that will be sooner, but that's the reality. We have to stay in touch. We have to watch what happen, happens everywhere. 
because it's not a magic wand that's going to say, hey, everything's back. Leisure, business, local, right. international, like it's all going to happen at different phases, regardless of yep. what happens with vaccines or politics or anything else. So you have to stay in touch. So I commend you guys and also all of those folks that attended over 21 days and those that are here on, on this final Friday that kind of put in the time and effort to come and learn and share. I love that you mentioned that too, because I've often, I've often wondered, are we going to just like, what's the, what's the uh, post COVID post mask going to feel like, like how, how are we going to experience that together? And, and to, to your point, Frank, I mean, I've, we've been thinking that through that too. It's, it's not going to be some wake up and headline news. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like that. Right. I mean, there, it really is going to be quite different. I think that's, that's you're, you're, you're dead on. It's going to be specialized, localized, uh, regionalized, et cetera. So uh, continue to stay connected and everything else. What, what's, what's probably one of your biggest takeaways or one of the biggest learnings that you, uh, that you've enjoyed? You know, I, I like hearing what everyone else is doing. Like, Hey, this is our situation and this is how we're dealing with it. I'm a lifelong learner and I learn through experience and the way to cheat on experience is listen to the others, you know, and totally. hear where they succeeded or failed and, and either accept or try it yourself in your own version. So that is by far my favorite thing. But the other thing, you know, going through not only eTourism Summit, but just we all have webinars and trying to learn. It's just the, the setup of business currently and changing in our future. I'm, I'm hot on this data and in the post cookie higher privacy world, how we utilize that to even as a DMO, it's, it's your customer in your city, but they stayed at this hotel and ate at this restaurant. I might even not know not know who they are. It's an anonymous cookie. Maybe I do if I'm lucky. Maybe I don't. So in that world where first party data and knowing your customer, really knowing them in cohorts, not, a, not necessarily, I know Will Seekham is doing this, but cohorts that I reach through these channels are behaving like this. Just that world is changing, you know, even without COVID. So I think a lot of the presentations and, you know, one of my favorite, just dealing with the post cookie world or things about data and, and measurement, those, those naturally resonate most with me and where I'm most curious and see the most change and upside coming, irregardless of where the kind of pandemic leaves us. And as, as we exit, that is a macro trend that was here before, is here yep. now and be here after. Yeah, and we yeah. have so many incredible presentations really taking <clears throat> that data theme. And I think it's good, more, more and more important of what we could just understanding what is available. And, and you know, I, again, I, that to me was, I learned so much from all the presentations and, you know, again, all the partners that are, are working in data that have so many um, really valuable tools and, and often they're, you know, in different little segments and they all work together. But, um, you know, that's a, I think it was a real big takeaway for me as well. Um, data is going to be gold for destination marketers moving forward. You know, no doubt. And I think still an opportunity that is uh, has enough like space to it. We, it, innovation, massive innovation is coming in this category that we still yet I think can't even cap, you know, capture. Right? I think this is so big um, and so crucial that it, you, you see it in like uh, feedback surveys where a lot of DMO. We don't even what what's the difference between a third party cookie and first party cookie? What is first party data? There's so much awareness still to be gained around it. Right? That tells me. Um, what we're going to see in the next few years is just, it, it's going to be incredible. I think what we're going to be able to see and do, and then of course, act on, uh, for our destinations uh, as we recover. I, I love that you brought that up, Frank. I completely agree with you. It, you know, one of the lines that, uh, I, I think I took mo mo most valuable out of the tourism summit was Brian Solis early on when he was talking about, you know, BC before coronavirus and after disruption and said, well, that, this virus has created massive disruption to our industry and certainly the travel industry more so than any other industry in the country. Um, but it, it also is going to lead to massive acceleration. And I think that that riff of things are going to change so much faster. We've seen it in retail, you know, retail and you know, digital has got you know, a decade and three months, you know, decades worth of growth in three months. We're going to see that in travel um, tools, I think as well yep. with, all, again, all the sponsors that are doing really innovative things and targeting and mining data and visualizing data and, you know, 
sourcing and coming, you know, it's going to be a fascinating, uh, you know, so strap in. It's going to be fun and fast. Yeah, those for sure. And then even the, not just the data itself and how we use it, but consumer expectations. Josh said it earlier, like people decide on what's your perspective on sustainability and they will choose a destination, a hotel brand, a, a type of vacation based on those type of things. And so we as destinations or marketers have to think about, okay, if that's what they're choosing, how do I best position? I don't control these things in my destination, but I aggregate, make recommendations and position us in the consumer's mind as such. So how do I deal with that? So, so really it all just keeps evolving. And, you know, we, as a travel industry, we've come together in the past through recessions and through things like 9-11. So we definitely will, but it's things that used to, we had more time to change over a decade. Now we got to change in a year. And so <laughs> yep. it's that kind of su survival of the fittest or acceleration of the best. And and I think, again, just coming to events like this and getting that knowledge and sharing best practices or even, hey, here's what we did and here's what went wrong can, can just be such a good rooting for all of us. So I do see optimism and, and things opening up. We do see signs of pent up demand everywhere it can yep. be. So people want to go out and have that travel experience. And it's up to us to not only survive, but thrive and learn through this time. Yeah, absolutely. I saw one great green shoot, an article this morning that said that Visit Florida is starting to dip their toes in international marketing, which was was good on stuff. Wow. Thing I've seen about international and that, that makes me happy. Yeah, for sure. All right. I love it. Yeah, good stuff, man. I, I, uh, this is such a fascinating conversation that I, I, you know, you bring up expectations again. And one of the biggest things I think that I'm continuing to look for is as consumers tell us more and more the way that they want to be communicated with, how quickly they want to be responded to. That's always a big one too. And you think about lead generation. I have a problem. I have, you know, I want to actualize on my pent up demand, right? Maybe I've got uh, time coming up, whatever it is, uh, that decision set, right? And so for us as, as destination marketers and, and, and t you know, tourism marketers, uh, tour operators, et cetera, our ability to listen to that uh, and then act on it uh, quickly, right? So, I mean, all of these themes, they start to, we keep talking through them and you, you back up a little bit from them and you go, man, they really do line up. They start to be dominoes to each other. And uh, it's great to to have these conversations where we're kind of continuing to think about them and go, oh, well, now we're thinking about this. And what if we did this? And what if we did that? That's part of why I've always loved eTourism <laughs> Summit and, and and everybody that comes and brings, uh, you know, their success and, and even their failures to what Jan was saying. Even even the failures goes, oh, that's good. Okay, I need yeah. to think about that next time. I, I, I wasn't I wasn't on my radar before. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Frank, I can't tell you how much I appreciate two things. One, your support and sponsorship of eTourism Summit. Very much appreciated. Two, more importantly, is your participation in you were on just about every just about every day and that and that meant a lot. So again, as we as we get this community building back together, it's uh, it, it really is very much appreciated. So thank you for your support. Thank you for participation and contributing to the insight. And uh, thanks for joining us today. This was really fun. My pleasure. I'll see you all in Orlando next. Can't wait. Yes. All right. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Um, so, so Josh, when I was thinking about, um, I, I just want, was wrapping up our, our conversation yesterday. Um, you know, we came up with 21 predictions. Did you see that? Pretty I cool. did. I did. Uh, Lori <laughs> and Jared and the travel vertical, uh, next week. But I was, I was pleased that we were able to come up with 21 solid predictions. And that was a, a great panel. Um, we're, uh, I've been, one thing that's been really cool over the course of, eTourism Summit is how we've been able to engage eTourism Summit in the travel vertical more. And I just want to make sure everybody in the community knows that um, it's a great resource for sharing wins uh, every week. Uh, it's a great resource for sharing job opportunities. Uh, that's ob yep. uh, obviously a, something yep. that gets clicked on a lot. Um, and it's a great opportunity to highlight some of the great things that uh, our industry partners are doing. So I just want to encourage everybody to take advantage of it, share it, uh, and uh, continue to kind of engaged on a year round basis with this community through the, the travel vertical. And uh, Lori Jo Miller has uh, uh, been an amazing uh, editor of the um, the travel vertical. And she's been done, doing a great job of kind of keeping highlights of everything that, that we've been talking about for the last one. So uh, Lori, thank you so much for uh, all you do for eTourism all the time. Um, 
There's another person yeah. John, before we uh, go on to our um, our wrap up that I have to acknowledge, and I'd like to ask Becca if she would pop ah. up really quick. Um, that would be a good thing. Uh, Becca Smith, there she is. Wow, wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> uh, just so you all know, uh, again, we had 21 days uh, of content. We had 28 different presentations. Uh, that meant 28 pre-conference calls, at least, so to plan and connect everybody. Um, we had to build from scratch kind of a, our e-tourism presence on this big marker platform. Uh, and Becca started it from zero and is now the master of Big Marker to the point that um, I will tell you, uh, my biggest fear is Big Marker trying to hire her because she asks so many questions and has figured this entire thing out. But Becca, just a quick shout out from everybody at eTourism Summit. You've done an extraordinary job putting this together, planning, organizing, uh, getting all of our speakers lined up and topics. And so this is all on you congratulations yeah and thank you. I, I let me let me just jump thank in there you. too and if you guys that are i mean there are um uh, there are 37 of you on right now right and seriously uh, i have seen becca up late in person uh when we you know in years past up mm -hmm. early uh i mean putting in countless hours behind the scenes and she probably is is uh the getting a little uh, embarrassed right now even because this because <laughs> she just has got such an amazing servant heart and i'm just telling you uh and then even earlier in the summer all those webinars orchestrating that and then uh you know while while bringing in new life uh, literally uh <laughs> you know uh yet another uh, new human being right you're raising tiny humans yeah. so this is this is no this is no simple task uh i you are a gift and a treasure and i'm really 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 glad for everything that you do for all of us even those of us that that don't know you uh, personally well enough yet. Well, thank you. That was very, very kind and very heartfelt from both of you. So thank you, um, Will, for putting me on the spot. And um, <laughs> everyone can see the uh, the wizard behind the curtain, I guess. <laughs> All right, Becca, thank you. And she will be in Orlando too. Yes. So you can meet her in person in November. Exactly. Thank, That's thank right. you, guys. And, she, and she's on LinkedIn. So if you're not connected to her, Reach out, connect with their own LinkedIn, et cetera. That's right. Yeah. It's good stuff. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. <laughs> See ya. So, so Will, the, you know, um, I'm sitting here looking at these attendees, too, and I'm going, there are uh, many of you that I think we need to absolutely try to get interviews uh, in the travel vertical with you because that's mm -hmm. the other piece of the travel vertical, which is really great. Lori George does a fantastic job is some storytelling, some interviews. What, you know, what are you seeing? What's working? What are you frustrated with? Man, we'd love to see that. So if, if you're interested, uh, <clears throat> Jackie Saunders, I think you should definitely uh, reach out and, uh, you know, and let's, uh, let's connect there for sure. That'd be fantastic. It's such a great resource. Absolutely. So, you know, Becca, um, just conversations about Becca brings up something that I think is uh, another real takeaway for me from eTourism Summit this year. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Becca was my babysitter when I was working at Visit Florida. She was my executive operations manager, took care of all my executive projects. And then she took on the biggest projects we had at, uh, with Facebook, Google, Expedia, our big partners. Um, and before she, uh, we were able to steal her, steal her over to, to travel to run this. But uh, a great example of, and, and just watching how she's pulled together this event, um, that our skill sets that we need for not only, you know, Connect Travel and eTourism Summit to, to host events and put together a compelling content that, that resonates with the industry, but for destination marketers as well. Um, I, I, one of the conversa a couple conversations came out about, you know, every social media manager should be getting a raise because their jobs have been exploded over the course of uh, COVID with the interactions and the, you know, the political pieces of, you know, if you're not showing pictures with masks and get beat up. Uh, skill sets and destination marketing are changing. All the talk about community earlier, you know, community engagement is a totally different job uh, that we've been forced to learn. Uh, talking about data and the skill sets to understand and make decisions based on data, not on, um, you know, on real time data, not on kind of last year's uh, survey. Um, yep. And it's really changing, Josh. And I think that this is a great opportunity for our industry to 
accelerate faster uh, like all these other industries. That in the soft skills that are now in such high demand for those positions, right? The ability to foster communication, uh, mediate difficult environments online, right? There, yesterday, just talking about the 21, you know, takeaways, the digital visit, right, has really uh, crept up to be just as important as the physical in destination visit, right? So we talk about our, for years, we've had these visitor centers, and, and that's been another piece of the conversation. Okay, what happens? What does the next visitor center look like? Is there still a need for visitor centers in the future, moving forward, et cetera? But now we, we're really continuing to narrow the narrow the gap between dig, online and offline. And we have taken the liberties. Uh, of course, we see it uh, very easily on any platform, uh, just this discourse, right? And so now uh, to be a social media, media manager in the space for a DMO and to be charged with the weight of that responsibility, right, is incredible. So I completely agree with you. We, we've seen this trend. Uh, there's so many great... Um, memes and, uh, and elsewhere about, you know, life of the social media manager out there and, and groups to connect with and stuff. And, uh, but it is, it's, it's a skill set that is evolving quickly. It's in high demand, obviously. Um, and back to, you know, what Frank was even mentioning with the c- consumer expectation, uh, consumers expect that if they reach out with a question, they expect for you to listen and respond, right? And that's our social media managers. That's it. They are the front lines. You know, they're on the front lines uh, doing all of that hard work. I know I sat in that chair myself for many years. Uh, so I, I have a special empathy for for those friends. But um, I, I agree with you completely. It's it, 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 it's going to be I'm going to champion that, too, for sure. There's no doubt about it. Every conversation I can. Uh, they do, they they have earned those raises uh, and, and need those uh, need those skill sets. And we, we need them desperately. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I think maybe we should shift over and introduce a new, an, another kind of a newer uh, e-tourism summit fan uh, and ask Rose if you could, Rose, if you could pop up and, uh, and join the call and tell us a little bit about yourself and your, and your uh, role with um, and, and experiences with e-tourism summit. So if you could click on when you have a chance, that would be awesome. Um, you know, all right. I... <laughs> There's Rose. Yes, well, Rose. There she goes. Hey, Welcome. Rose. Would you would you do me a favor and introduce yourself to the to the e tourism summit community and tell us a little bit about yourself and and your favorite favorite part of e tourism this year? Will do. Um, my name is Rose Hapanowicz. Until very recently, I was the director of travel and tourism for Destiny USA, very large attraction in upstate New York. I have worked in shopping center marketing, shopping center management, retail. I have a very well-rounded uh, background in tourism, and tourism is my passion. I totally enjoy it. Um, I think. I have to go along with Will in talking about Brian Solis. He was definitely my favorite presenter. He gave me such a sense of optimism for the future because he told it like it is. You know, I always think of tourism. We're one big family. We know how to work hard. We know how to play hard. Uh, We know how to have a good time. Now is not the time to have a good time. It's the time to roll up our sleeves and get down to business. You know, one of the things when I first started out in tourism, they used to say tourism is low tech and high touch. And I think now for us to survive, we have to remain high touch, but also become high tech. Uh, The presentations uh, done on the technical side were a lifesaver for me because I learned things that I was kind of afraid to ask things I think people, you know, Josh, you made the comment there that there are DMOs who probably don't know the difference between, you know, a chocolate chip cookie and an oatmeal raisin cookie. But, um, you know, I have to say I didn't know the difference as well. You know, as I said, Brian's was certainly my favorite presentation. He talked about Generation C and, you know, everyone being connected and going digital first. He talked about, you know, first we've got to survive, then we're going to become alive and then finally thrive. And and I just bought into all of that. I mean, I thought that was just tremendous language. One thing I do have to say when listening to um, Alvaro from Krant, he put a slide up during one of his presentations 
both of which I thoroughly enjoyed. For anyone who missed them, they were about demystifying, uh, oh, what do you call it? Machine learning. That's it, <laughs> machine learning. Um, mm -hmm. He made a reference to being one of the sponsors of Connect back in February, and he showed Obama up there. And I remembered Obama, and I'm sure he said it a million times, but you know, he said, what should we do? We should be useful and we should be kind. And I felt that so many of the presentations I saw were people being very useful, but also being very kind. They were sharing their expertise. I don't think there's anyone who presented that I would not be afraid to reach out to, whether on social media, uh, quick email, LinkedIn, you know, whatever, to ask for advice and, again, to commend them on what they brought to me. You know, something else I'd, I'd like to recognize, being a New Yorker, is the um, presentation that uh, New York City and company uh, put on, I thought was phenomenal. You know, the, uh, the ability, the all in, I thought that summed up everything that we need to be doing right now. You know, my biggest takeaway was realizing the importance of collaboration and partnerships will never go away, but applying it within the community is key for our future. We talk about trust and we want our potential consumers you know, our repeat visitors to trust us, but we also need to trust our assets. We mm. need to go into our communities and mold these people in small business, these residents, these influencers to communicate who we are, what we have and how we can all come together. You know, there's a, there's a gentleman in New York state named Josiah Brown uh, he calls himself the Sherpa, and he's always used the expression that some of us are so held back by county lines and mm -hmm. tourism regions, and the customer doesn't see that. All the customer sees is a potential itinerary or uh, something that someone bragged to them about that they experienced, and that's where we need to go. We need to get our residents to believe in our product, to sell our product. You know, right now we've got the strength of small is big. You know, the open space, the secondary and tertiary cities have a better opportunity right now in the states than the dense urban areas because they've got what the customer currently is looking for. Uh, very, very exciting stuff out there looking forward to the future, want to stick with this business. Um, very thankful to be a part of uh, the summit. Awesome. Wow. That was, that was incredible. That was powerful and incredible. I'm in awe right now. I mean, Rose, <laughs> thank you so much. Seriously. And, and Wes even said so well said. I mean, seriously, Rose, that was very, very well articulated. Thank you for just gifting us all with that because I couldn't agree more. Like that was that was powerful. It's so true and just so incredibly true. Thank you. Thank we'll you. get you back in business soon. So thank you. Thank you, Rose. <laughs> really appreciate your participation in this all, all, all month long. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So good. I love I love those takeaways too. I wow. mean, all of them uh are powerful takeaways and so true. So true. That was that was that was great, and it's so great to see that people are taking are really grabbing good content and 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 feeling inspired by some of the conversations. And it's really cool to see that it is that community. Uh, and uh, nothing better than when Rose said, "I would be ha I would be comfortable picking up the phone and you know, or emailing any one of your presenters and asking for advice." That that makes me that makes the entire month worth it to me. Could not agree more. If I'm building something, if I'm building a culture, if I'm building an environment, if I'm building an event, if I'm building a community, uh, it's that right there that I want, right? So that validation that we just saw, it will. Great job, first of all, uh, you and your team. But that is the whole ball of wax. And that is not everywhere. That is not everywhere, not in other industries, right? I mean, you probably just like me and others going on, we we attend other events. We, we learn from other industries and we go, 
we we've been in those environments where that's not our takeaway, right? Per se or whatever else. So, gosh, that that's powerful. I'm just I'm excited that that's that's heartfelt because that would be my hope too for this community that we would we would see that we would actualize that uh, you know participate in the various groups and, and definitely reach out, ask, connect, ask the questions, keep doing it. That's what makes this uh, so special. You know, Josh, one of the things we we say community a lot with the Tourism Summit. That 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 got me right because that is a community. Uh, one thing that was new this year uh, with the Tourism Summit is we added that community pass uh, that allowed destination marketers to put this out content out to all the market tourism marketers within their community and another first person to step up and and take us up on that was Justin from Denver. Uh, yes, and it's Justin to pop in. There he is. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Hey, look at you. Look at you. Get I'm going to tell you a story about this in a couple of minutes. Awesome. <laughs> so I, I love that you brought that. I got to get this. What'd you say? I lost you. I'm going to tell you a story about this in a minute. Oh, perfect. Well, Will, I, I'm so glad you you circled us back to the community pass, and I'm glad Justin is tuning in with us because um, that's a really special offering. Like, that's one of the things that when we um, – triaged uh, and moved to that to that uh, you know direction. I was so excited because uh, the work that we've been doing at Street Sense and certainly what we're seeing others do. Frank mentioned it too. You know, across the country, um, you know, our locals are hurting and they don't have access to this same stuff, right? They merchants, retailers, uh, restaurants, certainly a hospitality industry, frontline workers, all of them. Uh, you know, are basically looking and going, where, where do I get my help from? Where, where's it going to come from? Where, you know, who, who locally uh, can I lean on? And this is, is great. So I, I'm, I'm really, I can't wait to see even months down the road, Justin, what you experience locally with your partners because of the fruit that's going to come out of this opportunity that, that you guys have afforded your, your community with. You hit the nail on the head. It was perfect. Um, matter of fact, we have a sort of a bi-monthly uh, marketing advisory committee meeting. Will probably started it in Denver 10 plus years ago or 15 years ago. And our final one of the year is uh, next Thursday. And I'm planning to ask if there was anyone that got a particular takeaway from the sessions. I think, you know, I know we had more than 100 of our partners sign up for the access. I, Becca is going to let me know how many people actually used it. But just offering it, you know, endears us, I think, to the community. And as you mentioned, I mean, even as the DMO budgets are struggling, that's nothing compared to the budgets of our small local businesses. And so I agree. We're more than happy to provide those resources for them. Yeah, that was that was 24 years ago. I started at Denver. That's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> don't remind me. So, what was your I, favorite question? My favorite. Well, I, I, I was I, I took part in some about 10 sessions, some or all of them, and really sometimes just was able to tune in and to you know to tune in for a little bit, hear something really valuable, and then get on to the rest of my day. Um, I kind of actually Rose, I think, said it best. My favorite session was that NYC and company um, because there was a lot to learn in every session that I attended. But the way that they engaged their the way they they they, they represented the community and, and what they wanted the community to, to feel during this time, I thought was exceptional. The way they went about it was really interesting. So I learned a lot from that. I can't say that we've sort of taken up the mantle from them and done anything similar, but it certainly lets me. Uh, it gets some insight into just how to how to do it right, and you know we're engaging our community in lots of ways as well. But I just was I, I just got a lot of great feeling from from what they did there. Um, so that that is my that is my that was my favorite session. Um, but I've got some other takeaways. You, you let me know how you want to take it. So oh, you, shoot. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, so this that was I've got my five takeaways. Five takeaways. That was one of my favorite session. Uh, my second one was how important it is to make the time to attend these sessions. You know, I put a block on my calendar for every day for 21 straight straight with business days. And I tried as hard as I could to keep that time because prior to this, during the summer, a couple of things came up like the DI annual meeting. And I was not able to um, attend any of it. I registered for it and just like I flatlined with it. And I, re I realized that if you don't make the time for this, you won't get the benefit. And so you had to. And so you know, I had to learn how to detach from the daily horror show that is my inbox and my newsfeed. And it was great. And I, you know, I, I didn't want to, my, my second favorite session was the hot takes the other day, just for the sheer 
shit show of it. It was fantastic. <laughs> it was, it was it, and, and I really, it came at a time when I needed it the most. They had announced some additional restrictions in Denver. It was just the perfect time for that. So the the takeaway for me is make time or, or you don't get it. So you got, just like your daily exercise, you got to make time for that kind of connection. So my third takeaway is how desperately I miss this community. Um, as much as the content helped me out, I really enjoyed seeing all my peers. They're all struggling with the same things that we are in this area and approaching it in these amazingly creative ways. Um, conferences have always been the way that we create this community. And it's it's always good to see our peers in any fashion, but it's it obviously just underscored the reason why I can't wait to see everybody in person. Yes, so that's can't the- agree. Yes, can't agree anymore. Okay, tell us the story about this. Oh, yeah, oh, we want to hear. I got two more. Top five. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know we got we're out of time. Number four, we're slaves to technology, um, and it really is just you know the technology is. It, it can only get us so far and we're going to be craving that interpersonal connection at the end of this. So the, the fifth thing I want to do is the, there's just a shout out to the industry partners. It was said before, Will, you gave a list and I just want to name some people because um, both inside and outside of the tourism summit, 21 days have been invaluable. We shouldn't be surprised that the industry partners stepped up in the way they did. Um, Will, Becca, the whole e-tourism team, obviously Josh and the street set team, you guys have been amazing. Longwoods, uh, amazing research and miles, their partnership there. Destination Analyst has just been really stalwart. The Arrivalist team has been great. TripAdvisor, um, Sojourn and Adara love what they're doing. The Pandora team, Google, Facebook. Um, of course, Tourism Economics has provided great information. Um, our work with Expedia has really paid off this time around. Madden, uh, Martin and the Sparkloft team. You know, our crew over at Simple View or a Simple View shop, they've been amazing crowd riff. So um, I can't wait to just, you know, hug all of them when we can. So now you then, can- okay. I, I want to. I run haiku. I run an e-tourism summit haiku. Or no, yes. I it's like oh. COVID haiku. I think I followed the format correctly, and it's strictly using buzzwords. So here's my 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 COVID haiku. Unprecedented, nimble pivot, challenging. We are here for you. <laughs> There's my COVID buzzword haiku. So oh, I love that. <laughs> that is perfect. Is- I just I don't like to toot my own horn, but I invented the Jake the Sweater hashtag. And <laughs> I I could share my screen. Let me see if I can do this. I'm gonna take two seconds and I'm gonna application window. I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna try to share my screen in the middle oh, of Big Marker because this. you you got this. I think you got it. Hold on a second. I got this. I saw a small selection of some of the pantheon of those who have Jake the sweater over the last several years of e-tourism. So me and Eric Thompson from Salt Lake, Katie formerly of, of Austin. Girls can Jake the sweater as well as the guys. That's right. Mitch from Fort Worth. Mitch, he yep. the sweater as often as he can. Nan, she Jakes the sweater. Seth. Seth. We miss, we miss Seth, but he Jakes the sweater as good as anybody. You know, I was Jake in the sweater when Steve arrested me. <laughs> during that session and then of course you know will nobody rocks a pink the way will does but you know we're always going to have to go back to the man yes the man, the man. oh so, the godfather and just being able to do that um uh this year in person so uh jan i forgot about it and jan reminded us that we got it that we got to rock the sweater so fill up your twitter hashtags with jake the sweater and let's see what we jake can do the sweater that's oh, a, wow. a great way to wrap up and tribute to the guy that did that founded the e-tourism summit and gave it the juice and the community and built it like it was. So a big cheers to Jake and uh, thanks for uh, allowing and trusting uh, Connect Travel with his baby. Tw- you know, 21 years later, and uh, we we very much appreciate it. So uh, it's a great great way to to kind of wrap up what has been an amazing 21 days. Um, I again thank Jake for for building this baby and bringing us all together and entrusting us with uh, an amazing community. So Justin, thank you so much. Yes, thanks um, for everything. We did this, more, but this uh, you know, not all heroes wear capes, but they do wear sweaters. So <laughs> I love it. And thank <laughs> you for bringing up all the amazing sponsors because without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. We will be uh, celebrating yep. the Etsy Awards for the best in tourism marketing in. Uh, in November at uh, in Orlando uh, to continue to celebrate, um, look to see this content uh, um, 
we'll be continuing to share it over the course of the year. I encourage you, uh, the system is up. So if you heard of some sessions that you were not able to attend, uh, pl please go back and watch them. Uh, it was amazing content. And, uh, and finally, Josh, I just want to thank you uh, for everything that you've done for the, um, in partnering with us through COVID and Street Sense through COVID and the pandemic with our staying connected webinars, all that you've done here for uh, um, the e tourism summit virtual, and then um, again, thank you, Becca, for sharing all of the incredible businesses that um, supported this event. Now, a lot of longtime supporters and a lot of uh, brand new supporters that will become an integral part of this community uh, for hopefully the next twenty years. All right. Absolutely.